10 races at Sha Tin on Sunday. The feature race is race number six. It's the Chinese General Chamber of Commerce Cup. But we'll be looking at a couple of other races on uh, Racing to Win here this afternoon. We've got it all covered. I'm Andrew Zern. Please say we've uh, joined in the studio by Paul Lally, our former analyst and race caller Tom Woods. It's a really strong finish to the programme. certainly is, Andrew. We've got uh, Master Montaro going around in the last race, but an unbeaten horse uh, going around in race number eight is uh, Master Eight, the son of the Omaru Force. He's led up in both of his runs uh, to date so far. He was pretty emphatic uh, first up and then last time out. Didn't win by the, the same sort of margin, but uh, won just the same. So he's resuming, so we will be interested to see if he can go on with it. Mm -hmm. A number of interesting or exciting horses returning to the track as well, Paul. And any jackpots we're looking at? Yeah, a, real, a ripper one, actually. Triple Trio, uh, over seven million going into that one. So it's a really good jackpot. Um, it's sort of jackpot the last two times from memory, the, uh, the Triple Trio. So uh, that's the only one, but it's, uh, it's a good one. OK, and California Spangle returns in race mm -hmm. number nine as well. You'll find that on the website under the audio video section, written by Zach Purton. He's having a pretty good run of things at the moment as well, with uh, eight winners from his last couple of meetings. But the meeting we're looking at at uh, Sha Tin on the weekend is meeting number 13 of the season. We're on the C course, and as I mentioned before, all 10 races uh, are on the turf. We have one class five on the program, comes up as race number three. A number of first starters in the opening contest as well over the 1,000 metres, but look at that from race six onwards, class three is the final event, is a class two. We're looking at races eight and 10 today. So, race number eight is a class three, 1,200 metres uh, is the trip, and we have 12 going to post as well. Good view, Clarico comes up in trip. He's a two-time winner, though, over the 1,200 metres here at uh, Chartin. Team Spirit down in class, first up for the season, but he's won four times in this grade in the past. The Golden Scenery has been in the market. He's two starts this campaign, actually beaten favourite, two starts back, but he's got to take on Master A, two returns here, unbeaten last season, two from two. Nam Jong Sings was a last start uh, winner, excellent chariot up in class as well for his win at the back end of last um, season. Science Patch makes his Hong Kong debut. Intelligence Patch was his name when he raced uh, in New Zealand. And then we've got Gallant Express and Proud Dragon. Gallant Express also first up for the campaign. He was beaten favourite, an odds-on favourite for his last two starts. OK, we'll have a look at the, uh, the speed map first here for the eighth. And as far as the pace is concerned, Tom, we're saying good in the early stages. Uh, Master Eights, I'm assuming, will be favourite, possibly out there in front. Yeah, well, there's a horse in the race called Team Spirit as well. He's a horse that likes to uh, go forward. And he's apprentice-ridden, so he's only carrying 124 pounds. Uh, Master Eight, of course, carrying 130. So, look, it wouldn't shock if they... Uh, rolled forward with him because uh, he is that uh, sort of horse that does uh, race on speed. Goodview Clarico, another one. Uh, Moraki looks a little bit uh, tougher for uh, him. He's out in barrier number 10. And the newcomer, uh, Paul Science, Patch was up on the speed in his recent trial. Yeah, he didn't go too badly, did he, in his trial? Uh, Gallon Express will need a little bit of luck. I mean, he could get cover three wide, or uh, Joe might look to slot in just in front of the golden scenery if there is a spot that does come for him. We know Proud Dragon uh, gets back. Excellent Chariot, another one gets back. And Namjong Sings. Uh, he was impressive last time, but he comes in with a really late run, doesn't he? Ally King from gate number 12 has the tongue tie on for the first time this time round. All right, OK, so we'll see what happens then with, uh, with Master 8. But uh, why don't we hear from the trainer and see how he's been uh, through the summer. He's, of course, Frankie Law. Master 8, Frankie, went from 52 to 74 off those two wins in his first season. Uh, what impressed you most about him last season? Uh, you can see he... Uh, two... Uh, to start to win and uh, he's still uh, learning because I think uh, he need to try to a little bit relax to be better. At this moment, he's jump and go. And, uh, but anyway, uh, the first start this season, uh, just let him jump to see if very comfortable. If he lead, he lead, he lead. if uh, cannot, just a uh, uh, second should be okay. So do you think he can be a little bit more versatile or is he one dimension has to lead? I think... Uh, this week maybe he will lead because he's still uh, fresh and uh, first start. Maybe later on I think he can maybe just sit uh, second, third. He's had two trials uh, coming into the weekend. One was on a, a testing all-weather track. Are you happy uh, with him and what was the feedback from Joe after the trial? Uh, the first trial also, uh, he's still not 100%. Uh, he finished fourth and then the second trial much better. And Joe come back and said, oh, more better than the, the, the first one. Has preparation gone smoothly uh, leading into the weekend with Master 8? Uh, yes. Do you believe he's forward enough to, to win first up? Uh, I think so, yeah. Both runs to date as well over 1,200 metres. Um, is he going to get over a little bit more ground in time, do you feel? Uh, at this moment, I think 12 is OK. 
All right, short term we'll deal with uh, then as far as 200 metres is concerned. We've had a number of horses, Paul, come back this season, lose their unbeaten records. What do you think about him? Yeah, look, I, I think he can win this, though. I've, I've liked those two trials. Because Joe's on him, I said in the speed map, uh, he was on Gallon Express, because Wagner's on Gallon Express. But, so Joe was sticking with... Um, uh, master eight, as you would do, he's unbeaten. And oh, look, mm. I think he can. Uh, I think he can win this. I think he can as well. I just guess it just depends what happens in the early stages with Team Spirit, whether how much sort of pressure he wants to put on him, and that would be maybe the the only little question mark. What sort of pressure? Did you get quite it? a positive vibe though from Frankie when you were talking to him? I did, yeah. Yeah, he was okay. happy with him. All right, brilliant. All right, that's uh, Master Eight. We'll keep looking at uh, the potential challenges though. Good view, Clarico, uh, Tom, up from the thousand metres. Magic Phoenix as well. This is his debut, so he's got something to build on. It wasn't the worst of runs, I thought, from. Uh, Magic Phoenix on uh, face value. He drew uh, in barrier number one on that occasion. He plugged away. Um, good view, Clarico. This was one of his uh, better races. We've seen him to good effect down the straight in the past, but we've also seen him to good effect around the turn, of course, behind uh, nervous witness Harry Bentley rides. He sort of he held his ground. He didn't really lose any ground. He didn't make any ground either. Yeah, look, um, good view, Clarico. Two-time winner over the 1,200. So stepping up in trip's not going to be a problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's nervous witness winning the race yeah. as well, emphatically. Um, he's two from two as well. Nam Jong Sings, nothing wrong with this win, Paul. Was the last time? No, I thought it was a nice win from him. He did get the race uh, run to suit here. Uh, California Sybil went quite um, uh, fast and in front. And look, once he got into the clear, hit the line, and he just won really nicely, I thought. So it was uh, a good win from Telecom. Uh, uh, Nam John Sings, I should say. Yeah, he wound up nicely, sort of from the last 200 metres, he uh, really got uh, stuck into the race so strongly. Did Nam John Sings, he's a, a two time course and distance uh, winner. He, he's come from last here, uh, busy finish, but uh, he was able to outstay them there. Yeah, I mean, he's a bit more exposed, obviously, than Master 8, but he's solid form line, I suppose, and he's got race fitness on his side um, as well. Excellent uh, chariot we'll look at uh, next time. Now, he's up in class and first up for the season as well. He goes well fresh, uh, three starts for two wins, but. Coming into this, I didn't really like his barrier trial. Uh, he was uh, pushed out severely, I thought, in that uh, trial. And last time he had a, had a good run midfield. It was quite an easy victory in the end to get past Infinite Power. He's been in good form at the early part of the, the season here. But the trial turned me off. Yeah, that, that was the, the key for me as well. And just a barrier eight, just a little bit tricky, I thought, as well. But, look, he won effortlessly there. So I think the rise the rise in grade isn't a problem for him. It's just more the, the barrier. All right, well, here is the trial, Paul. He yeah. finishes midfield. Um, but just OK, you think? Yeah, I thought it was. I thought he was pushed out a little bit here in the trial. Now, it's a different surface, obviously. This is on the all-weather, but, yeah, I just didn't like the way he really finished it off, Tom. He's a three-time winner from his uh, 12 starts, but uh, he just seemed to be plugging and going up and down in the same spot. Uh, Ryder had to really get stuck into him there, so that was the reason why I left him out. First up record, hard to ignore, but just on that trial, I was a bit ho-hum about it. All right, well, Gallant Express won first up last season, pretty impressively um, as well, and then was beaten, Tom, as odds-on favourites on his next two starts, including he, this one. He was at 1.3 behind E-Star and then behind Super 10, and uh, I don't think in this run last time out he really travelled at all. He was uh, niggled out off the back and uh, he needed a bit of persuading. He was doing his best work late, but he never really travelled like the winner in this race, I thought, at all, Paul. No, he didn't. And look, they set them up to 1,400 metres for those two um, races that he lost. And obviously he wasn't too far away, but uh, back to 1,200 fresh, I think, is a good thing for this horse. OK, all right. Wagner Borges ride him, Gallant Express. One more to have a look at um, here, Paul Lynch. Um, the horse, actually two in the race, Alec King, sorry, in the trial, Alec King's in there as well, but Science Patch, um, he's on making his Hong Kong debut. Yeah, look, he's had three trials to get him ready. He's 11, 21 pounds, uh, this horse. And I didn't think this trial was too bad from him either. I thought uh, he went nice enough. He's drawn one with Jerry Chowboard. I didn't get him uh, quite in there, but... I wouldn't be surprised if he ran a bit of a race for us here in you, Hong Kong. You look at his form, he's had form on uh, rain-affected mm. tracks in New Zealand. That might be the little question mark that's uh, coming into this. We haven't had a lot of rain here in Hong Kong over the last sort of uh, week or so, so it's probably going to be firm underfoot, and I just wondered if that was going to suit him at all. Uh, two horses in front of him there, fantastic treasure, made a super return last week, and Wellington, Group 1 winning sprinter, his glorious drag in the grey as well mm. in that trial as well. So it does look quite strong. Master 8 though, uh, Paul, probably not surprisingly, is our favourite. Yeah, no, look, I'm going to stick with him. I think he can keep his unbeaten record, uh, 3 from 3. So Master 8 on top. To beat Gallon Express, uh, back to 1,200 fresh, I think it's a good thing. Uh, now, Proud, Proud Dragons only had the two starts, and that debut run I thought was really good behind Gluck Racer. Uh, back to 1,200 metres as well. Uh, we've got him in, and the Golden Scenery created a big impression on his debut run behind Master 8 here. And he's been running in some pretty strong form races behind the likes of Drops of God and My Sugar as well. So I didn't want to leave him out entirely. 5, 11, 12, 4. 
I'll go five to beat four master eight uh, two-time winner who beat home the golden scenery last uh, time out the golden scenery I thought was a little bit below par last uh, time out that was his, I guess you could say his worst run today he was caught wide and a little bit keen but he boxed on okay at the end so they're the top two five to beat four Nam Jong Sing uh, goes in off the back of that last start to win the other one I put in was uh, Proud Dragon now he is getting close to a class drop off for 62 here and they drop him back to 1200 which is where he ran his best race here so far but uh, he had a, a few traffic issues early in the straight last time out five four six and twelve I think master eight is the one to beat and then take your pick really I had Nam Jong Sings as maybe his biggest rival but um, they could probably line up behind him but exciting to see him return on the weekend still to come we'll look at the final race on the program which is a good class two there plus all the best bets that's up next Racing in Hong Kong is at Sha Ten this weekend with 10 races on the programme. We're looking at the final event, race number 10 as well on the sea course as well. This is a class two over the 1400 metres. Really good uh, lineup headed by Rattan. Made a rare visit to Happy Valley last time out, finishing down the field there. California Deep Shot was behind Master Montaro last time out, who comes back again but draws barrier number 13. Ballistic King, first up since January. We've got uh, Golden Dash, who was midfield behind Trillion Win last time out. Beauty Fit, also behind Master Montaro. That was two starts back for him now. Mr Snowden was beaten favourite behind Master Montaro. Sunshine Warriors coming out of that happy valley race that uh, Rattan uh, ran in. Amazing One Plus also behind Master Montaro last time out as was Sea of Life. So there's obviously a key form race we'll be having a look at uh, in a moment. So we'll start off though with um, the speed map here. So we're saying good to slow in the early stage. Does that potentially favour a horse like Master Montaro who's drawn wide? Yeah, well, I think they got better suit, uh, better speed than they were expecting last time out mm. uh, with uh, Master Montara in that race that he was able to win, and he jumped a lot better, so that was able, as a consequence, to have him sitting a lot handier that he has been doing so in the past. So, if, provided he jumps, we'll hear from Zach Purton shortly. Um, he'll be up there somewhere as well. So too will be uh, Mr. Snowden. Uh, Highland Fortune's a horse that uh, has uh, led on the odd occasion in the past. He's normally handy, but it should be California deep shot. He should be able to have enough early toe to get to the front. He didn't have a lot to finish off with last uh, time out. Outside of them, uh, Paul, a uh, sea of life uh, over on the inside. Uh, Decrypt has got the tongue tie uh, back on, but I, I thought the, the pace would probably be slightly on the more on the good side than the slow yeah, side. Yeah, because California Deep Shot is a horse that does like to roll in front. So if he does get there, and I think Highland Fortune will just make it a little bit tricky as well. Um, he's just drawn one uh, inside him. So I think he's going to sort of push up on the, in, in the inside, and that's just going to make it a little bit faster. So I think it'll be more on the good side. OK, all right. But uh, potentially a few horses out, trapped out uh, there wide, which we'll look at in a moment. Let's start off, though, with the last start win of Master Montaro with jockey Zach Purton. Final race of the day, Master Montaro. It looked a, a strong victory last time out. Was it key being able to get him to jump a little bit better and be a bit closer to them? Yeah, well, he flew the gate on this occasion and, and I took advantage of that uh, in a race where it didn't look like there was a lot of speed. I was able to get into a lovely spot and, and the speed of the race uh, was actually a little bit more genuine than uh, I, th I thought it may have been pre-race, but that really helped him because he just got into a lovely rhythm and you know he couldn't have got a better run really and, and then he, he went and did the rest. But once again, we've drawn a bad gate. We've drawn worse this time than we did last time and it looks like it's going to be more tricky so we're going to need plenty of luck this time I think. Is that one of his sort of chinks in his armour is that you sort of don't know what he's going to do at the start because he does tend to get the hit up on the odd occasion? Yeah he's been um, quite a playful horse uh, in his time here in Hong Kong and and uh, he, he can do a few little things wrong but I think his attitude is continually getting better all the time and I was quite impressed with the way he handled himself last time. I rode him early on in his career here in Hong Kong and he was quite a handful but he's accepted the place now and obviously his form is showing that. He won by a length and a half last uh, start. Was that the, the real Master Montaro or have we still got a little bit more to see from him? I think there's a little bit more there to give. Um, you know, it would have been nice to have drawn a, the perfect gate and get the perfect run and, and give him every opportunity but, uh, you know, we have to work with the cards we've been dealt and pray for some luck. Absolutely. Uh, 12 winners uh, across uh, October so far, four meetings. Uh, group 2 winner with Lucky Patch teaming up with Nervous Witness as well. Um, have you got off to a, a better season in the past than you have this season? Uh, there has been another season where I got off to a flyer as well, so um, another two seasons actually. So it's not uncharacteristic, but uh, it's nice to have the support early in the season. And Jockey Club's obviously trying to slow me down on Sunday by giving me all these, these bad gates again, but you know, hopefully I can just keep the show rolling. 
Well, he's got some good rides, uh, this being one of them, uh, Master Montaro. Let's have a look at that, that race again. Uh, we obviously saw the win and heard from Zach as well. We'll pick it up at the about the 600 uh, here, Paul. So Master mm. Montaro, our winner, as Zach was saying, just found himself in a great spot, but barrier 13 this time around. The other horse is Beauty Fit, finishes second, comes from a long way back. Sea of Life as well stays on well. He finishes third. Mr Snowden in fourth. California Deep Shot eventually into fifth place. An amazing one plus. Um, he trails the field in last. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I quite like um, Sea of Life in this race. He's drawn eight here, and you can see him a little bit further back. I think from barrier number three with this run under his belt, he's going to get a really good run. I mean, Master Montaro, uh, he hasn't put two together yet in Hong Kong. Uh, he might have turned the corner, as Zach sort of said in that interview now. Um, so, look, I've got them both in, uh, Sea of Life and Master Montaro. And I'd actually put uh, California Deep Shot on, because if they do leave Malone in front, he can be there for a long period. Yeah, I think Master Montaro will be a tough to beat again, providing he jumps and can yeah. settle and get into a good spot. But I thought it was a cracking run as well from Sea of Life. Uh, that was his first run for a long time. They obviously have got a bit of an opinion of the horse, because he was only beaten three lengths in the, the Classic Cup, and he's only had limited starts since then. So I wouldn't be dropping him. He's such an impressive sight, Master Montaro, when he lets down. You see the length of his stride. Try and work it out, really. Really, but it's huge when he gets rolling um, and his stats are looking pretty good Tom. Yeah they certainly are, he's, he's won three now from his ten starts. Um, he arrived here with a, a strong reputation, I guess there were a couple of occasions where he got beaten and some were starting to question that but we heard from Zach there before and he still thinks he's got a little bit to offer. Alright, okay. What about Mr Snowden, who was actually favourite in front of uh, Master Montaro last time out. Has he progressed since then? Let's speak to the trainer, Douglas White. Douglas, Mr. Snowden, in the, the last race, he's kicked off his Hong Kong career in terrific style. Are you sort of surprised the way he's settled in and acclimatised here? He did surprise me slightly in, in the manner in, in which he did it. You know, he only had the one trial leading into his first race. Uh, he, I only did that because he came out of that trial so well and, and uh, pretty forward. Um, and, you know, he's, he, 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 he was very capable and, and handled himself very professionally. So. He's settled in well, he he's certainly enjoys Hong Kong, and that makes my life a lot easier. He chased home Master Montaro last time out, and there's a few others in that same race last start that are going round again. How did you rate that last start performance? I thought it, it was slightly below his previous run. Um, I thought his previous two runs were, were very good runs, and um, I thought last time he was a little bit flattened. He, he looked like he hit a flat spot, and he never really picked up. Um, Master Montaro, on the other hand, reversed the form and, and won very convincingly. Um, I have done a few slightly different things and it's hoped that that makes the difference, but um, they can hit a flat spot and we'll see how he goes on, on the weekend. It's one of those different things, the, the cheek pieces, because he did wear them overseas prior to arriving, didn't win with them, but what are you hoping the, the cheek pieces might achieve? Well, he's a horse that um, he does have a look at a few things, especially in the mornings, and I'm just hoping that they, they get him a little bit more focused. All right, there you go. That's uh, Mr. Snowden. We'll see if he can turn things around with Master Montaro. There's a few other horses, though, to um, take into consideration, Paul. This is at Happy Valley. Sunshine Warrior um, finishes second here, ultimately. The other horses in the race were Highland Fortune, just in the inside, runs fifth. Beauty Fifth again, down on the inside in sixth. And Rattan, um, probably not his best effort. He runs tenth in the end. Yeah, I think he's better at uh, Shatin, Rattan. But I really like um, Sunshine Warrior coming out of this race. Now, he has one second up in the pass as well, this horse. He does like it here at uh, Sha Tin. He's a two-time winner over the course and distance. Comes in with a light weight uh, and a low draw, barrier number two. So I think he's going to be a bit of value in this race. Yeah, he's come from uh, well back in this race, was taken back. Telecom fighters uh, hacked up on that occasion. He goes around again on Wednesday night, but um, good second, uh, good uh, first up run there from him. Yeah, he had him cold, didn't he, Telecom fighters? But uh, Sunshine Warrior, good in defeat. So Ballistic King, Tom, I put Chung for the trials. Now, we haven't seen him for a while. He's uh, been off the scene. He had surgery on his uh, fetlock to uh, have a chip removed uh, there. And look, he's very consistent. He's only won it a couple of times, but uh, six seconds, five thirds, five uh, fourth placings. Uh, trial wasn't too bad. Uh, he finished fourth here, but he wasn't too far off them uh, on this occasion, just finishing off uh, in the middle part of the track here. Didn't get him in, but he was he was on the cusp. Yeah, barrier 12 was the reason I didn't uh, get him in either. I'd like to see what he can do fresh up. And saying that, he has been uh, placed uh, fresh up in the past. Yeah, it's a very strong race, though, to yeah. come back into, isn't it? Uh, Master Montara, Paul, is our favourite. What do you think? Yeah, he's definitely in for me, but I'm going to go with Sancho Mori and make it the each-way play, coming back to Shartan. A sea of life in there for second, uh, just ahead of Mont Master Montaro and California Deep Shop from the front. 11, 13, 3 and 2.
Three nine eleven and to thirteen, Master Montaro, provided he jumps well, gets into a good rhythm. I think he'll be there at the end. Uh, Mr. Snowden, uh, his run uh, last time out wasn't quite as good as his one prior, but uh, he's been pretty consistent since arriving here. Sea of Life, I thought was uh, terrific first up, and Sunshine Warrior uh, made good ground there, and is uh, a horse that's a two-time winner, course and distance. So three nine thirteen and eleven. Three and nine, also the cue for me there in the last. Love the big horse, Master Montara. Now, ten races, uh, Paul, pick out the highlights for us. Yeah, I like a couple of first starters early on in the card. A horse called Super Fortune and also a, a horse called Sight Spirit and races one and two. See if Zashen can break through in the class five. Uh, Maldives is a quirky character, but uh, his work's been really good leading into his race. And Courageous Knight, a horse who's only had the two starts, he comes out of a, he's going into a tough race as well, but I think he can prevail. So there's some of the early highlights for you. OK, and not forgetting, you'll find all the uh, the previews on the website audio video section uh, hkjc.com who was the best of that lot though Paul? I'm gonna go for one of the first starters race number one number seven super fortune he's had three trials to get him ready and one of them is really good and he did finish behind stronger in a, in a strong trial as well and in the last the one we just talked about sunshine warrior each way is currently over 20 to 1 at the moment we'll do the play in the first with Kaying spirit calonista super fortune qqp Best for me comes up midway through the program and it is Durham Star who goes around in race number four, horse number eight, Zach Purton for Paul O'Sullivan. Blinkers are going on like the recent trial and the value comes up a little bit later on with Craig Star, race seven, number three, good record, second up, comes from an informed stable, Jimmy Ting and the play in that race, a QQP, three, seven and eight. All right, best for me going the feature, the Chinese General Tr Chamber of Commerce Cup. Garita second up, super run from him behind My Sugar. First up this campaign, and as far as each way, the first starter, Beauty Glory. Karis Teton rides, I think, will be out in front for a long way. Hopefully, he can hold on. QQP around Garitas, six, seven, and eight. It's as simple as that in race number six. Well, there you go, that's Chartin taken care of. We're back, though, at Chartin on Wednesday night, mm. Tom. We are. We've got a dirt meeting there. We've got uh, eight races uh, coming up. Class 2 is the main affair. I think Wishful Thinker might be having a spin around on the dirt yes. and telecom fighters as well. Yeah, that's going to be good. And then, uh, of course, it's a day meeting at Happy Valley. Uh, looking forward to that next, the weekend after as well. Yeah, also on that dirt meeting, we've got Hong Kong Great and King Shield mm. in that same race. It looks a really good contest. That's Wednesday night at Chartin. But 10 races at Chartin on Sunday first. That's the show, though. Thanks uh, for watching. Hopefully, see you at Chartin on Sunday when we will be. Racing to win.